Hey folks and welcome to lesson 6 of software design and development for National 5 Computing Science. This time we're going to be looking at complex conditions. Complex conditional statements involve using an operator such as AND, OR, or NOT. And we'll be taking a look at these today. So let's go to our Python program. I'm going to create a new one, a new REPL. In Python, I'm going to call this Complex Selection 1. I might make a few of these. Here's a new program. I'll close my files window. And let's set up an example of what we want to do today. So I run a computing club and I'm going to ask the user if they want to join the computing club. If they say yes, display a welcome message. Otherwise, display a sad message. Aww. So asking the user if they want to join the computing club is quite simple. We get the user's answer as an input, and because their answer is going to be like a word like yes or no, that'll be a string. Inputs are automatically strings, so we don't need to cast it as an integer or a float or a string or anything. It's automatically a string. Now the message will be something like, do you want to join computing club? And I'll leave a space on the end here, just in case, because if I run this right now, you see that space there? That's quite handy. So if I can type yes, Beautiful, that looks normal. But if there was no space, the message might look a bit odd and the user might be tempted to add a space. That's quite a common uh, mistake that people make is they add a space. So their answer isn't yes, their answer is space yes, which is a lot more difficult to work with as a programmer. So let's add that space. And if their answer is yes, we'll display a message saying, welcome to the club. If answer, double equals, because we're checking if it's equal, yes, then we'll print the message, welcome to the computing club. Easy peasy. If they don't answer with yes, so else, so everything else that they type in, we will print a message saying, oh well, maybe next year, sad face. Oh, so now if I run this and I type yes, that's perfect, it works. But let's imagine that space wasn't there. And then I typed the space, space, yes. Now from the keyboard, I have typed space yes. Is that the same as just yes? Well, if I press enter, it'll say, oh, well, maybe next year, even though it appears as though I've typed yes. So let's add that space back in because I like that space. But also what if our user likes to use a capital Y? Why doesn't the program like this? Why does it not accept yes as an answer? That's because it's case sensitive. This has no capitals in it whatsoever, whereas this does. So what we could do is use a complex condition to take account for more possible correct answers. So what we could do is we could say if the answer equals yes, or the answer equals yes with a capital. Let's try this. So now if we type capital Y for yes, welcome to the club. And it'll still accept the small y. So both of those are now acceptable answers. But what if we type something like yes, because they're really excited to join the club? Well, that's not accepted. Oh no, so we could write or answer equals yes. And we could even do just to be double sure or answer equals yeah. <laughs> Let's resize this. Bloop. So now we're covering a whole bunch of possible answers that the user has typed in. All right, let's give it a blast. Yeah, welcome to the computing club. Okay, so this is a complex condition. We are checking multiple conditions. This is one condition if the answer equals yes, or if the answer equals yes with a capital, or if the answer equals a shouty yes, all caps, or if the answer equals yeah. Now this entire if statement only requires one of these to be true if this one works out true, or this one, or this one, or this one. So only one needs to be true. Any one of them, only one. But if they're all false, if none of them work out to be true, then we do not execute this line of code, and we go to the else, and we do that one instead. So this is how the or works. What about the and? Let's take a look at that. Now I'm gonna change this program slightly, and what I'm gonna do is, if the answer equals yes, and I'm not gonna do any complex stuff here, but I'm gonna do what's called a nested if. So if the answer is yes, well, they want to join the club, but 
In order to join the club, they need to be 15 years old and they need their parents' permission. So what I need to do now is get their age. Age equals int, input, enter your age. And then I also need to check if they have parents' permission. So let's call it permission, input. This is going to be a yes or no again. Do you have parental permission? Now what we can do is underneath these two questions, I can add another if statement that says if the age is greater than 15 and permission equals yes, then we can print the message, welcome to the club. Otherwise, we can say unlucky, try again next year. So if we run down this program and just figure out what it's going to do line by line in our heads, we can kind of see what's happening. So we store their answer to the question, do you want to join the computing club? If their answer is yes, we then ask them to enter their age and we memorize that. We then check if they have parental permission and we memorize that. Then if their age, and this is all happening inside this if statement as well, all of this, because this is all indented. If their age is greater than 15 and they have permission, so both of these need to be true. They need to be over 15 and they need permission. If any one of these, if either one of these is false, if either one of these isn't correct, they are not welcome to the club. They have to try again next year. So let's run this. We've got a few scenarios we need to test for. Let's click run. And if they don't want to join the club, if they're like, nah, I don't want to, well, nothing happens because all of this only happens if their answer was yes. Well, let's see someone who does want to join. Yes. Enter your age. He's old enough and he has permission. Welcome to the club. Excellent. So that works. What about someone who's old enough without permission? He does want to join. He is old enough, but he doesn't have permission. Unlucky. Try again next year. Oh dear. What about someone who does want to join, but is not old enough, even though they have parental permission? Oh no, still not old enough. You need to wait another year. <laughs> So we've covered two things already. We've covered nested if statements. This is one if statement inside another. And we've also covered a complex condition. We've used and, and we've used or. And you can have as many conditions in here as you like. In our previous example, we checked multiple variations of the word yes. And it's important to note that when you use an or, or an and, that you mention the variable name again. If I just say if answer equals yes or yes. In English, this kind of makes sense. If the answer equals yes without a capital or yes with a capital, that makes sense to humans. But to the computer, it gets to this part and it thinks, or, or yes what? It sees this on its own and it doesn't know what to do with it. So we need to say, or answer equals yes. We need to type the variable every time we're comparing it to something. Computers aren't smart. They can only do what you tell them and they will only do exactly what you tell them. So in this case, we're asking it to check if the answer equals yes without a capital or if it equals yes with a capital. Very important to remember to include the variable every time. Okay, so there's only one thing left to learn and that is the not logical operator. The not logical operator basically negates what we're looking for. I'll show you an example. This will help you understand it a bit better. So if we're asked to join the computing club and we say yes, we're then asked to enter our age and whether we have permission. If we're old enough and we do have permission, it tells us that we're welcome to the club. But let's pretend that there's a password that we have to type in. Password equals input, enter the password. Now, because this is the greatest club on earth, the password is computing, all lowercase. But if they get the password wrong, we're going to tell them, buzz off, you're not allowed in. So what we're looking for is if not password equals computing. Then we print buzz off. We're very rude. Now notice that the word not goes before the thing that we're checking. This is just one of those weird things in programming, which isn't exactly like English. Like you wouldn't say if not password equals computing. In English, you would say if the password does not equal computing. So this is kind of backwards, but it makes perfect sense in the computer's mind. What the computer does is it evaluates this expression. And if it's true, the not operator will flip it to false. And if it's false, the not operator will flip it to true. 
So if the password equals computing, the not operator will flip it to false, meaning that this will not execute because the result of this equation, this uh, logical operation, was false. And it will only happen if this equates to true. Now that's going into a bit more detail about a thing called Boolean logic, and you you can really get into the depths with that stuff. It's not for National 5 level, I just wanted to give you a quick example of it, of how this works. So this is basically saying, if the password isn't computing, tell them to buzz off. Now if the password isn't not computing, i.e. it is computing, then we can print, welcome to the club, the greatest club. All right, let's give it one last try. We want someone who does want to join, who is old enough, who does have permission. What is the password? Computing. Welcome to the club. Let's try it one last time. I know I said the last one was the last time, but this is the last time. And then they say no. Buzz off. Oh yes, perfect. Right, we've covered complex conditions. We've used and, we've used or, and we have used not. We've also looked at nested ifs. Now this is an if, inside an if, inside an if. That's a lot of nesting. But it's not a hugely complicated program. As long as you understand indentation, you understand your logical operators, and if you've followed everything and you've practiced, I keep hammering this in, practice, 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 it'll all start to make sense. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Catch you in the next one.